Hello, my name is Naomi Streamer, and I am in Sudan visiting a number of the Adra programs. Today, I am in Um Jawasir to see the desert farming program. It is very exciting because as you can see around me, it is all desert. So it will be very fascinating to learn how they have turned this land into a farming community. As I visited some of the farms and spoke with the people who live here, an amazing story of transformation emerged. Not only did I see new life growing in the desert, I witnessed firsthand new life and opportunity springing up in the hearts and minds of the people. The story of the people living in this part of Sudan is a sad one, and one being faced by so many communities in Africa today who live on marginal <coughs> lands. With the rapid world climate change we have experienced over the last 50 years, the livelihoods of many people have been devastated by desertification. At one time, not too long ago, when I was a boy, our people used to make a good living by raising sheep, goats and camels on this land. We even got enough rain to grow crops and we had lots of grazing land for our livestock. Then, during the severe droughts of the 80s, we had almost no rain, and our homeland was destroyed. What was once beautiful grasslands is now mostly desert. In the early stages of this crisis, Andrew's response was one of emergency relief. The drought had not only wiped out herds of livestock, it had devastated a way of life. What do you do when you are a nomadic herder and all of your animals die, and your pasture land turns to sand? The two-phase work that Andra does is found within its name, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency. Whenever or wherever a crisis strikes, a disaster hits, or war and conflicts swell refugee camps, Andra is often one of the first responders on the ground with emergency life-saving relief. Then after the crisis is over, Adra often stays by to help people rebuild their lives with integrated programs of personal and community development. This is what happened in Um Jawasir. Even though the famine was over and some rain was falling again, the land had become a desert and would never again be able to sustain the people's way of life. They would never be able to return to being nomadic herders again. They were casualties of a changing world. And without help from the outside from an agency like ADRA, the community and culture of the Hawawir people may have been lost forever. As ADRA began to do development work with the people, it not only drilled boreholes to access a huge lake of water under the sand, it also delivered a wellspring of ideas and education that have brought amazing, positive change to the community. Life has not been easy for us here, especially for women. It was our job to collect water and firewood. Every day we would have to walk about five kilometers in the hot sun to the nearest well. We were always on the move, searching for new pasture for our animals. As children, we never had the chance to go to school. After Adra came to work in our community, we began to settle down and establish small farms. Having a constant supply of water, we built small houses to live in and schools for our children. One of the things that has brought about the biggest change in our lives is the women's development group that Adra started. 
We started the group with the idea that we would learn how to read and write, but it has become much more than that. In our group, we learned many things about health and sanitation, food processing, how to make soap, how to run our household economy, and the many different ways that we can contribute to the income of our family. A revolving fund helped us get small loans to start small businesses in our homes. In our groups, we also discussed the problems and challenges we face and what we might be able to do to make improvements. I am so grateful for all of the things that ADRA has done to help our community. Today is a holiday and I have found little 11-year-old Zakaria in the fields helping his father with the farming. Before the ADRA project came to town, there were no schools and there certainly was not any farming. You can see that this has turned into an oasis from what used to be a desert. As I talked with Zachariah with the help of a translator, he told me that he really likes coming here after school to help his father with the field work. He said that he especially likes harvest time when they can gather all of the food that they have grown and take some of it to market. He said that one of his jobs was to gather enough alfalfa each day to bring home to feed the animals. It is amazing to me to see such a familiar crop of wheat in the middle of an absolute desert. I am here with the man responsible for this particular crop of wheat, Tumsa. Tumsa told me how much life has changed for him since Adra began partnering here with his community. Taking mercy on us, he invited us to take shelter from the hot sun. As we talked together, he told me how his family used to be nomads and how the droughts of the 1980s had completely wiped out the herds of his tribe. He told me how Adra had not only helped them with emergency supplies, but had shown them how they could make a living as farmers using irrigation from the boreholes. Now not only do they have crops for their families and animals, but also some left over for income. He told me about how Adra had formed a men's development committee that still meets on a regular basis to discuss and solve the issues of their community. And he told me the group had now reached a point where they were managing the project themselves and would be able to continue even after Adra leaves. As we sat there talking about life in the desert, I noticed Toombs' camels nearby and couldn't resist asking for a ride. How could I visit Sudan and not ride a camel? Being led around on that camel, I could not help but think about what it must be like to live your entire life as a nomad, always looking for water and pasture, never knowing about the luxuries of life that so many of us take for granted. What a wonderful thing Adra has done for this community by giving them new resources, training, and opportunity. After Adra began to work in our community, things have really changed. We all settled down in one area around the boreholes, and we became interested in building a community. We started schools for our children. We built a health clinic where we have learned about health and nutrition and a safer way to live. Farming has given us a steady income. If someone said to us now, why don't you go back to being nomadic herders? We would never want to do that. Our children now have dreams of becoming engineers and physicians instead of shepherds and nomads. And thanks to ADRA, they have the opportunity to do just that. Today I learned a great deal of the importance of water. Unlike at home where I can turn on a tap or take a 20 minute shower, it is not so easy here. Learning of people who previously had to walk five kilometers to simply get a bucket of water to bring home. Water is very important in so many parts of the world, especially here in Um Jawasir, Sudan. And I just love what Adra is doing and the help that they are giving this community. I met wonderful, beautiful people today and I feel as though I have been blessed.